So our last talk today is by Chen Hua Shan from University of Toledo, and he'll be talking to us about a predator prey system with generalized hauling type functional responses and elite effects in the prey. Okay. Thank you, Professor uh, Campbell, for the introduction, and uh, Professor Wu, Professor Ran, and uh, Professor uh, Campbell for inviting me. So it's my great pleasure to give a talk uh, on the occasion of uh, Professor what with the. the uh, 17th uh, birth, birthday. So actually, well, if we count from Professor uh, work with, I was the third generation in the family tree. So I was, uh, I, I'm the student, your student, student, uh, something like that. So today I'm going to talk about uh, the pre the pre system with uh, generalized honing uh, type functional response and uh, the early effect. So this is a joint work with my colleague RC and my uh, former PhD student. So firstly, a, a very brief introduction and a motivation. And then I will focus on the predator prey system with honing type four functional response. And uh, I think I may consider this talk as a supplement to Professor Zhu's talk. So I will focus on the half application and the neopotent saddle application because Professor Zhu has mentioned the neopotent elliptical point application and the application for the neopotent folks. And then a short summary for the predator prey system with honing type three functional response. And the last is a summary. Um, the system I'm consider is uh, here. So. We have the predator and uh, the prey. So X and Y uh, re represent the prey and the predator uh, populations. And uh, I is the intrinsic growth rate. K, environmental carrying capacity. C is the conversion rate. D is the natural rest rate. So if you look at the first equation, so compared to the classical predator prey model, I have uh, one more term, X minus A, so which describes the impact of early effect. Um, so early effect was firstly discovered by Ali long time ago. So this, and then describe the relation between the uh, growth rate of the population and uh, the population density. So with the less population, so species may have a hard time to meet, to produce or defend themselves. And the parameter A is like the threshold for the early effect. So for artifacts, it could be uh, strong or uh, weak. And uh, you may notice that uh, here for the term, okay, uh, A minus A, I didn't put the A in the denominator, not like this. Here K is the denominator, but I didn't put the A in the denominator here because I want to look at the transition between the strong and the weak artifact. So for A positive, but less than K, we have the strong artifact. If K is negative, we have the weak early effect. Now, if A is zero, we consider it's the transition case. Now, the following is the graph for the, the population growth rate for the logistics and the weak and strong early effect. So the, for the strong early effect, you see there's a threshold here. Okay? So below this threshold, the population is decreasing. Uh, there are several examples can be found uh, in reality in ecology, like the flu uh, fruit fly, flies, the blue fin tuna, and uh, the like the obligator cooperative breeders, like the African white dogs. And then for the uh, functional response, here we consider the honing type functional response. And, uh, uh, I think you may see this kind of uh, this uh, slides uh, from Professor Drew's uh, uh, talk, so I will skip that. And uh, some well-known result for the uh, predator prey system with the logistic growth rate. Here we didn't consider the there's no R effect here. Now for the honing type one functional response, so there's no periodic solution. Okay. For the honing type two functional response, so when the interior equilibrium loses stability. So there's a unique nipta cycle. 
uh, for the Honing Type 3 functional response um, about uh, 10 years ago. So Professor Rosso and uh, her student proved uh, the uh, cusp singularity of all the three is the organizing center. So therefore, there are three, uh, two limited cycles in this system. And for the Honing Type 4 functional response, uh, there are so many uh, papers on that, like uh, uh, in 2000, 2001, Professor Ryan and Xiao, okay, so they consider the case that B equals zero and uh, show that uh, Casper singularity is um, all the two. So there's one limit cycle if B equals zero. However, for the generalized uh, Horning type response function, so the, uh, the organizing center is a Casper of all the three. Therefore, there are two limit cycles uh, in this system. Okay. And uh, so our work uh, is to uh, look at uh, the impact of the RLE factor or the prejudice pre system. So we just have one more term here, x minus a. Okay. For the rest part, they are the same. Uh, we begin with the, the equilibrium points. So on the boundary, so we have uh, the origin and uh, the environmental carrying capacity. And here we have the one more equilibrium points EA for the RLE effect. But for the weaker one, so EA is on the negative X axis. So that point uh, we will not consider if A is negative. Uh, I would like to mention that if B equals zero, so this case has been conceded. And then in their paper, they show the uniqueness of the nuclear cycle. And for the uh, interior, uh, equilibrium points, so we will solve the system, okay, the system, these two equations for x and y. Now from the first equation, we find that uh, there are two roots for x. Let's denote them by alpha and beta. And therefore, there will be two possible in interior equilibrium points, E alpha and E beta. So G of x is the x knock line of the system. And by the linearization, we can show that E beta here is always a set of point, while for the E alpha, it's not a set of point. Okay. And then we consider the bifurcation of uh, um, the system at uh, around these equilibrium points. So for E beta, because of the set of point, so there might be a homokinetic bifurcation for E beta. While for E alpha, so a simple case would be E alpha loses stability, so half vacation will occur. So let's uh, first uh, consider the half vacation. Okay. So there are several methods to uh, develop to study the half vacation and the degenerate half vacation. So I list uh, uh, some of them. Okay. And uh, for the uh, predator prey system, so there are uh, some approaches to consider the half bifurcation. Here, I just list the one. So forgive me if I, I missed uh, several other methods. The first one is uh, the formula derived by Professor Wachwitz uh, in 1980s. So it's a very short and pre, uh, concise formula for the first Lyapunov number. And uh, if the first Lyapunov number is zero, so we may need the more information from the high order term. So then we will consider the Fox quantities from the generalized near the system. Okay. So now first let's see the, uh, the formula for the Lyapunov number. Now we consider a, a generalized uh, Gauss type of predator prey model. Okay. And uh, let's assume E alpha is an a point which is not a saddle. Okay. So we can uh, we just calculate uh, this formula and evaluate it at uh, the point uh, uh, x equal alpha. So if uh, this quantity is uh, less than zero, so the the system undergoes a, a supercritical bifurcation at uh, around the e alpha. So if uh, l one is greater than zero, so we have a subcritical uh, half bifurcation. Now let's see how powerful is this formula okay, for this formula. Now uh, let's see if we have, uh, okay, system one, that is the predator prey system with the uh, uh, Ali effect, okay. 
Now for the Hollin type one functional response, uh, so we can easily calculate L1. So that is minus four R, which is always negative. So the hop bifurcation is uh, super critical. And uh, for the Hollin type two functional response, again, so we can easily find the sign of L1 alpha, which is negative. So hop bifurcation is also super critical okay, for A between minus K and K. But for the system with holding type three and a four functional response, so from the numerical simulation, we see we have the following three cases. Okay, L1 could be positive, negative, or zero. So we would not quite be clear about this case if L1 is zero. In this case, we need the L2, L3, okay? like the second or the third Lyapunov of coefficients. Now let's just consider the degenerate case. Okay, so if L1 equals zero, now we need L2 and L3. So the idea is uh, we try to convert uh, the predator prey system to the a generalized Niada system. So we have the Niada transformation. Okay, so bring the the E alpha to the origin of uh, system four. So system four. Okay, there's a good feature for system four. So you see X and Y, the two variables are separated in the sense that uh, on the right-hand side, we don't have the cross terms for X and Y. And uh, because of this nice feature, we can easily do the calculation for the uh, Lyapunov coefficients. Now by this transform, so we obtain system four and the function psi, phi and F Okay, so it depends on the original functions, G, okay, and uh, the uh, response function, P. Okay. And uh, we can also verify the, this kind of uh, conditions. Now with uh, system four, the generalized the near the system, so Professor Mao Anhai, okay. so he provided a very nice uh, formula for the Fox quantity of the origin of the Niada system. So basically you consider the Taylor expansion of uh, this function, f of z minus f of x. So the coefficients here are bi. Okay? So the bi will tell you the Fox quantity of uh, the weak Fox origin. Okay? Now you will see that, uh, so the, weak, the origin is the weak Fox of k if uh, B sub 2k plus 1 is the first non zero coefficient for this uh, 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 power series. Okay. And firstly, if uh, okay, this coefficient B2k plus 1 is negative, now, so the origin is uh, locally stable, and if it's positive, it's, it's uh, unstable. Okay. Now, by this uh, kind of uh, algorithm, so we are able to calculate the Fox quantities. So the first one, the zero Fox quantity, we have B1 equals zero. So B1 equals zero, it's like uh, we have a pair of pure imaginary uh, eigenvalue. Okay? And uh, if B1 is zero, so we can go ahead to calculate uh, the B3. So you can regard B3 as a first Lyapunov number. Okay? So here B3 equals zero if and only if uh, the first Lyapunov number equals zero. And firstly, B3 and L1 alpha, they have the same sign. Okay. So if so B3 equals zero, so we can go ahead to calculate the, the second Fox quantity, B5. And if we find B5 equals zero, we can calculate the third Fox quantity, B7. Eventually we find B7 is the negative. And given the information for the B1, B3, B5, and B7, so we have the following uh, conclusion. So the hop application is con dimension one. So if uh, we have uh, a pair of imaginary roots, and uh, so here the first Lyapunov coefficient is not a zero, okay? So if the first Lyapunov coefficient is equal to zero, but the, uh, the B3 is not a zero, so we have uh, the half application of con dimension two. And then we have the 
co-gravitation of quantum dimension three. So this is the, the theorem. So they exist uh, the functions such that uh, we have B1, B3, and B5, uh, they all vanish simultaneously. Okay. So we can uh, prove this by the implicit fun function theory and uh, look at the, the region for the, for the A. A is uh, in a small neighborhood of our region. Okay. Because of this, so we can conclude that how fabrication of condom ministry can occur for both uh, weak and uh, strong early effects. Now, a, a universal unfolding for the whole variation of condemnation three can be uh, given in terms of the polar form, so R and theta. So let's just sketch the uh, fabrication state for the for this unfolding. So this is uh, in the parameter space. Uh, sorry, parameter space uh, eta one, eta three, and uh, eta. Eta two and eta three. Okay, so the okay, and uh, we just look at the interesting part. So check this uh, tetrahedron O A B C. Okay, in this tetrahedron, so we have three limiter cycles. And uh, here, uh, this is a numerical example. So we have for the three limiter cycles. And there's this conclusion for the hot application. So hot application can occur for the weak, uh, strong artifacts and the transition. Now, if we didn't consider artifact, so the maximum dimension of hot application is uh, two. Now, for the of taken application, so I'm gonna skip that part. So, so actually, this is the case when. We have the E alpha, E beta, they coalesce at a single point, so that is E bar. So for this e equilibrium E bar, it, it will be a cusp point. So the order of the cusp point could be two or three. Now we just uh, develop, develop an unfolding around that uh, cusp point. Okay. So this is a dimension three, uh, of of technical specification. And a consequence of this publication is that uh, in a small neighborhood of the origin here, so we will have uh, two limited cycles. Okay? And uh, we will have the homokinetic uh, loops. Okay? And uh, let's talk about the Ali effect. So for the Bogdanov Tekken's publication, so the, uh, it occurs for both weak and a strong artifact as, not, as well as the transition okay, A equals zero. So last part is about the Neopoldan saddle bifurcation. So we consider the following case. We have, uh, let's look at this uh, face portrait. Okay, so we have uh, uh, three equilibrium points. This is the, the EA and the EK and the endemic equilibrium point. So let's assume this is the E alpha. Now, if these three equilibrium points uh, coalesce, so we have a, a degenerate uh, single point here. Okay. So under this con these two conditions, so we have these three equilibrium points come together. And uh, by the blue up, so we can show that uh, this equilibrium point is a Neopoldan saddle. Also, we can calculate the normal form so when these two conditions, when these two conditions are hold. Now this is the normal form, okay? Localized at E alpha, okay? So that is uh, the system uh, 13. Now here there are uh, several important quantities in this uh, system, gamma one, gamma two, gamma three, and gamma four. So gamma one actually determine the type of the Neopoldan singularity. So if gamma one is less than zero, so we know the origin is a Neopoldan saddle. Okay. So if gamma one is greater than zero, but less than one half, so we have a Neopoldan elliptic point. Now for our system, we can show that gamma one is less than zero. So we have a Neopoldan saddle point. 
But how about the order or the con dimension of the saddle, this Newton saddle? Okay, it depends on the coefficients okay, on the of, from the second line, gamma two, gamma four, and etc. So we just uh, calculate gamma two. So gamma two is given here. Now gamma two here, it could be zero. So if, if gamma two is not a zero, so the con dimension of a near point saddle is two. So if gamma two is uh, zero, now we just go ahead to calculate gamma three and gamma four. Actually, gamma three will not determine the, the con dimension of the near point saddle. But the gamma four does. Okay, so, so if gamma two vanishes, we calculate gamma three and gamma four. Okay, so if and then we conclude if gamma four is not a zero, so we have a near point saddle of con dimension three. But you see this, we have at one more condition here. So if this condition fails, now we have a near point saddle of con dimension four. But we will not consider that case. Now this is, this is like the kind of uh, germ for the neopotent for the neopotent uh, uh, saddle, okay? and then we want to perturb the system and develop an unfolding for this uh, neopotent saddle of con dimension three. So um, before uh, let's recall several universal unfoldings of uh, con dimension three neopotent saddle. So the first one, okay was proposed by Dumotier okay, and uh, his uh, co collaborators. So this is system 14. Okay. I'm sorry, I have a typo here. So the x cubed, the coefficient should be plus one. Now here, uh, here, Kasai one and Kasai two, they are not a zero. Okay. So if they are zeros, we have uh, the con dimension is more higher. Now you see we have the quadratic term here. So, uh, when Professor Rosa and Professor Zhu consider the Hilbert 16th problem, so they want to look at the, the connections on the blue upper sphere. But this, uh, this term is uh, okay, it's very annoying. So you will see on the blue upper sphere, so the system is a cubic polynomial. So that is not easy to, for our to, for analysis. So Professor Zhu and then develop a new unfolding. So this one, so systems 14 and system 15, they are equivalent. Okay. But the good thing for the system five is on the blue upper sphere, the system they consider is a quadratic uh, polynomial. Okay. And then look at uh, system 15, we have uh, the, for the second equation, we have mu two, this is a constant or the parameter. So of course it's easy to see that if mu two is not a zero, so the x axis is not an invariant state. It's not an invariant nine. So what if x axis is an invariant nine? Okay, so we have, uh, there's a new normal form. So when we have, uh, there's a fixed invariant nine for the system. So, so this term for the, for this, um, this term is gone. You see y dot for y equals zero is identical equals equal zero. So x axis is an invariant uh, nine. Uh, for some models, uh, you will have always have a fixed invariant nine. So for this case, uh, Professor Rosso and uh, her student, okay, so proposed the, the, the following universal unfolding that is system uh, 16. So you see for the second equation, we're gonna have the constant term. And it is a common factor for y. So we have y and a y squared. Okay. And then, so when we consider the, our model, we try to develop an unfold, calculate the unfolding such that uh, we, we will end up with the unfolding 7, 16, or the, or the 15. And then, no matter how we try it, we can reduce our perturbed system to 1615 or 1617. Okay. So later on, we, we know the problem because uh, for our system, you will see x axis is always an invariant set. So system 15 is not uh, the universal unfolding for our 
nilpotent set of condemnation three. And uh, for system 16, okay, which is, is not also the folding for our nilpotent set, okay, because of what? Because here you have uh, when A is positive, so there's two equilibrium points, A0 and K0 always exist. But if we check system 16, you see if you let Y equal zero, so here you have mu one plus alpha hat X squared equals zero. You solve for X. So it depends on the alpha hat and the mu one. So you have some, something like a, a set or not of application. But uh, here, you see we always have two equilibrium points. So, so there's no set or not of application. So we just uh, add, uh, we modify this term mu one to mu one x. So it's kind of like you have the transcritical application between a zero and k zero, okay? because they always exist. But for the set or not of application, they might exist at the same time or disappear at the same time. So that's the reason we, how, we, how we modify the system 16 to 617. But how about the application diagram for this the new unfolding? So we have, uh, okay, we just sketched uh, this uh, application diagram, okay? So for mu one is less than zero, okay? And then we have, we have the, the half application okay, along this uh, straight line and uh, the hydrokinetic application, okay, HAL, like this. And then we have uh, the set or not application of the Nimpton cycle. So you will see these three curves uh, okay, intersect and this, this is the triangular region. Now let's take a close look to this uh, triangular region, okay, so bounded by three curves, okay. The, the homo, uh, half application curve and the hydrokinetic application curve and uh, the curve for the set or not of application of Newton cycles. Okay. And uh, the vertices of uh, this triangle are H2. Okay. At this point, uh, we have uh, the half application of cone dimension two. And here, HL2, homo uh, hydrokinetic application of cone dimension two. And uh, the point C, it is the intersection of the homo hydrokinetic application of cone dimension one and the half application of cone dimension one. Okay. And in this, uh, in the interior of, uh, of this triangle, we have uh, two limited cycles. Okay. So now it's, uh, you can imagine how these two limited cycles uh, are generated. So there are many ways, for example, it's from the hot application of condemnation two, or it's from the hydrokinetic application of condemnation two, okay. or it may from the the saddle node application of the limited cycles. Okay. And uh, one thing uh, I want to emphasize uh, emphasize here: you look at this all this face portrait. So here the x-axis uh, is a uh, is a uh, the invariant nine. So we have a fixed set of connection. Okay, so that is XX and uh, which connecting EA and uh, the EK. Okay. And uh, by uh, consider the, the Neopon set of condemnation three, so we are able to show the existence for the hydrokinetic application of condemnation two. Okay. So in the sense that uh, we know the existence of the the hydrokinetic loop, which is all the two. So when we perturb the, the hydrokinetic loop, says they might be limit the cycles. And then let, let's consider the generalized Horning type of three functional response. So we just uh, uh, summarize the result. So for firstly, for the Bogdanov Texas publication, okay, it's also condamnation three for both uh, weak and early strong effect. Now for the half application, so condemnation three exists only for the weak early effect. And uh, for the strong early effect, so the half application is condemnation two. Now while for the neopotent saddle, 
So the count dimension is exactly three. Now on the next slide, so we summarize the maximum count dimension for the different uh, degenerate singularities. Okay. So let's just uh, compare the Horning type three and a type four functional response. So they both have the count dimension three weak folks and a cusp singularity. But however, for the Neopotent saddle, for the Horning type four, so the count dimension could be greater than three. While for Horning type three, the count dimension is exactly three. And let's uh, incorporate the early factor and consider the count dimension. So for the, um, let's see, for the Horning type four, so for the Neopotent saddle, so we don't have, uh, okay, for A less than zero or equal zero, so we don't have a Neopotent saddle. For A is greater than zero, so we have the Neopotent saddle, count dimension greater than three. Okay. While for the Horning type three, so the Neopotent saddle is exactly count dimension three. And uh, for the half application, so you see here for Horning type four, okay, regardless of A, so the half application is always three. While for the Horning type three, so the count dimension of the half bifurcation depends on A. So only if we have A negative, so the count dimension is three. Otherwise, the count dimension is two. While for the Bogdanov Tekken's bifurcation, you will see all the dimensions are three, okay? no matter of uh, A. Uh, okay. Lastly, so this is for the impact of, of the early effect. So compare with the pre the pre system without the early effect. So the early effect induces a more steady state and the sustained uh, cycles. Okay. So the strong early effect will destabilize the population dynamics because we have the one more threshold for the population of prey. Okay. However, for the weak early factors, we observe the more limited cycles for a inactive. So weak early factor promote the sustained oscillations. Okay, so the talk is based on these two papers. And thank you. Do we have any questions? Tired at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, let's thank you for your answer.